This is the derivimeter made by the Gerber Scientific Instruments Company in the 1950s. It's a little square thing with a clear plastic grid and a thin pointy thing on the inside. The pointer points to this scale around the edge from zero at the top to infinity on the side. This whole thing in here can turn and it has two sliders and two knobs. Put this thing down over a curve on paper, do some of this stuff, and it measures the derivative of the curve. The longtime fans of this channel will both know that I'm a big fan of the Gerber Scientific Instruments Company. I made a video about the Equameter, a giant device for reverse engineering the equation of a graph on paper. And I made another video about their flagship product, the variable scale, which is a stretchable ruler that can be used to solve lots of cute problems when you're working with graphical data. H. Joseph Gerber was like the Leonardo of graphical computing instruments, you know, like to analyze data that only exists on paper charts and graphs. These days, data is all digital, but in the old days, sometimes the printouts is all you got. And if you want to analyze the data, you just got to do it directly on the paper. In the 1950s, there was a sort of triumvirate of handheld Gerber devices. The first was the variable scale, which is pretty easy to find these days. You know, there's always a few up on eBay. The second was an absurd, fancier version called the graph analog. It's like a variable scale turned up to ludicrous speed. It had a ridiculous number of different scales on it. And today it's much harder to find. Anyway, the third early Gerber handheld device is this thing here, the derivimeter. It measures the derivative. Joe Gerber's patent called it instrument for measuring the slope of a curve at a selected point thereon. All right. The derivimeter is pretty rare today, but I managed to get one in the original case with the two snappy snaps and with the original calibration tool. Uh -huh. You lay this thing down over a curve on paper and it measures the derivative. That uh, derivative is a fancy word for how steep the line is, the slope. The way we calculate it mathematically, a horizontal line has slope zero, a 45 degree line has slope one, and that slope just gets bigger as the thing gets steeper, where a vertical line would be like an infinite slope. For a curvy line, the slope changes as you move from point to point. Like over here, it's not so steep, and over here, it's a lot steeper. And the slope, you know, how steep the line is, it's super important in the real world. Like if this was my company's profits over time, you better believe that that point right there is important because it's so steep there. Actually, the slope is so important that this is basically why calculus was invented, to come up with a way to precisely define and calculate derivatives for all different kinds of mathematical functions. And because I know calculus, I can calculate the derivative of any standard mathematical formula you can think of. But what about the graph of a function that's just drawn on paper? Remember in Joe Gerber's day, the picture sometimes is all you get. So how exactly would you measure the slope at a specific point? Well, uh, here's a typical approach. You would draw on your paper the tangent line to the curve. That's the line which just touches the curve right there without any overlaps. And then you use that line to draw a triangle that's lined up with the grid. And then you measure two sides of that triangle as accurately as you can. And you make this fraction and that's the slope. Now, to be honest, that process isn't really so hard to do, but the issue is the accuracy. The real issue is the very first step drawing the tangent line. You know, I just sort of eyeball it, but small variations in that line will still look reasonable on the paper, but actually they'll give you different answers when you figure out what the slope is. So the hard part is positioning the line correctly so that it sort of hugs up real nice against the curve. And this is what the derivimeter does best. Let's just start by trying a straight line. Now, I drew this one so that it would have slope negative one half. To measure it on the derivimeter, you put it down so the grid on the device lines up with the grid on the paper. And then you sort of swivel that thing so the crossbar lines up with the graph. And then the pointer points to the slope. It says 0.5 and it's on the negative side, so it's negative one half. Pretty good, right? 
But really, this is just a protractor, right? I mean, the swiveling action is measuring the angle that the line makes with the horizontal. Protractors are okay, I guess. I got this cute one. <laughs> but the derivimeter is not just a protractor. The difference is the knobs. Check it out. Here I happen to know the slope right at this point is 0.6. So I lay down the derivimeter, turn the thing so that it more or less lines up. And now here's what I didn't tell you before. That crossbar is bendy. When you turn the knobs, these little posts emerge and push on the bar to bend it. So you can turn the knob to bend the bar until it has the exact contour of your curve. And these two slidey things give you two more points of contact to fine tune the curvature of the bar. So I position everything just right so that it curves right along with the curve on the paper. And I read the slope. Remember, I made that slope to be 0.6, so that's pretty good. This bendy bar is the real stroke of genius here. You know, in school, you learn to find the derivative by drawing the tangent line. It's a straight line. And for me, as a mathematician, I usually focus on abstract, ideal shapes. So the straight line to me is perfect. But working on paper with your hands, it's too hard to line it up right. It would have never occurred to me to make the line bendy. You know, when you run the equations, you always use a straight line. But this is on paper, not equations, and the bendiness allows the instrument to be far more accurate. That's smart! My derivimeter works okay, but it wasn't in great shape when I first got it. The pointer was actually fully detached from the crossbar, which made it completely unusable. I managed to open the thing up and I soldered the pointer back onto the crossbar, but I'm just doing this with my bare hands and it was really impossible for me to join them back together at a perfect 90 degree angle. If you look carefully, you can tell when the crossbar is square with the grid, the pointer skews a bit to the right. But old Joe thought of that too. The outer scale is actually printed on a movable ring and you can loosen the four big screws on the front and move it around to recalibrate it. So my crooked indicator works just fine. I turn the scale so that it still points to zero. All in all, this thing's really great. It's such a smart and simple design and I've never seen anything like it. You know, when I'm fiddling with those knobs, it makes me feel like I'm doing one of those claw machines. Or one of these. It's such a weird and unique kind of interface for a tool like this. Look at these things together after all these years. The old Joe Gerber hasn't let me down yet. Actually, I've made a recent mind-blowing acquisition that I'll feature in an upcoming video. I even hid it in one of the shots in this one. Did you find it?